You hear that too, Diane? Uh, whatever bird that is. Good afternoon. How is everyone doing this afternoon? Um, It's a little chilly, but it is very beautiful out. Hello, hi Gail, hi Carol, hi Louise, and Lynn, hi Nancy, Diane, Jean, it's so nice to see so many of you here. So, today we're going to start off, um, actually, happy Wednesday. <laughs> um, we are in the middle of the week and uh, the days still continue to feel um, like they are running into each other, <laughs> um, but it's good to acknowledge the day. And yes, Kathy, hi Kathy, it is Earth Day, so happy Earth Day. Um, I feel like our prayers lately have been in honor of the world of the earth. So that's really good. Yes. And my daughter actually um, reminded me this morning that it was Earth Day. And day 40 of quarantine. Yes, Diane. Um, but who's counting? I don't. <laughs> that's a really good point. Um, so today we're going to start off with our gospel reading that will be um for sunday uh and i'm actually not going to say much about it but ask you a question so be prepared just a little bit to have to share your thoughts and then um, we'll go right into the prayers okay so the gospel reading for this coming sunday is luke 24 13 to 35 and uh many of us probably have heard this one many of times. It's the walk uh, to Emmaus. And so I'll read it. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood there, they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have, been, have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb earlier this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. 
As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, that's Luke 24, verses 13 to 35. And that is what um, we will hear a message from Pastor Mike on um, this coming Sunday. So instead of me giving you some sort of reflection, um, I actually had a question. <laughs> because, uh, what actually, yes, what, uh, what is happening with uh, Pastor Greg, Bible study on the road. So these people were going through a journey and in essence, even though a lot of us are home and we may not be going very far or we might be going on walks or we may have to go to the store if it's an emergency or if it's necessary, um, and even in our own homes, right? Even in our encounters online, there are moments in which um, we, Christ might be revealed to us where we see God. And sometimes I guess, you know, they can feel like, like, yeah, that's, that was definitely a moment which I saw God, right? And then sometimes it may be a little later that you may have recognized something beautiful that God had showed you or you saw God in it. And so the question is, where have you seen God um, these past, I mean, it can be within the 40 days at which we have been doing this. It can be within the past week. Um, what are some moments that you have seen God um, in all of this? So I'm opening this up for y'all to share. I'm going to be kind of quiet now. <laughs> so if you wouldn't mind, add those to the comments and then we'll go right into prayer. That's a good one, Diane. People sewing masks, fabric masks for their neighbors. Yeah, I've actually been seeing that a lot. Um, a lot of people uh, sharing their gifts um, of sewing and making uh, masks for people who need them. Pastor Greg, yes, encountering God and all of uh, our colleagues offering online devotions, absolutely. Carol said, the beautiful spring showing up in nature. Kathy says, in, in your relationships that you're working on and appreciating nature. And Nancy shared that she sees God every day at the shelter and the people that they are housing and serving there. That's really beautiful. I'm gonna wait it. Gail has say, said that she has seen God in feeding the hungry. And that's really beautiful because that's actually in that moment and uh, all the encounters matter, yeah? But, and then that specific moment of the walk to Emmaus, it is when 
they invite Jesus in and they have the meal that Jesus is revealed to them. I think that's really beautiful. Steve says, in all of the flowers and trees blooming with new life. Diane says, our governor truly watching over our safety of Maryland. I do think he's doing a great job, that's true. Lynn says she, see God, she sees God in all that we are all doing to help those in need. Yep, practicing social distancing, being at peace in our midday prayers, Sunday service. Terry, that's wonderful. A neighbor that buys food for you, so you see God working and through other people, that's really beautiful. Louis says, going for groceries at senior time, sharing social distance, being patient, baking desserts for needy families. I mean, if you ever need a person to send some desserts to. <laughs> yeah, the birds singing. This time we have, yeah, of reflection, Jay, that's really true. I've been spending a lot of time reflecting as well. And the healthcare workers, that's true, Gail. Well, keep them coming. Thank you so much for sharing those moments. And I want to encourage you to be open to this revealing um, during your daily time at home, if you ever take any walks um, and what you might be seeing outside of your home, even in the news or people that you know and how we are encountering God. Um, uh, I think, it does, it does give us a glimpse of hope. I imagine that the the distant the disciples who were walking on that road that day, you know, they must have felt pretty hopeless, right? And feeling all kinds of things, anxiety, loss, all of that. And then in those moments when, um, even in that walk, right, when they didn't quite recognize that it was Jesus. Um, they probably felt something different. And then in that meal time when they realized that it was Jesus, right? It, that must have felt given them a glimpse of hope because immediately they get up and they go to Jerusalem. Um, and sometimes those moments are like that for us and sometimes they're more quieter and contemplative and reflective. And I think that that's all true and valid and beautiful. So take that with you today on this earth day. <laughs> We'll start off in our prayers and then um, I challenge you to bring the leaves up a little bit so you can hear the birds again, see the wind moving. So we'll start off with some quiet time. So God who shows up in the midst of all of our sorrows, who shows up in the midst of the unknowns, the discomfort, who shows up in the midst of even our joys and um, in the beautiful moments that we encounter. We thank you for this beautiful day in which we acknowledge the beauty of the world, of the earth, we thank you for this time that we get to come together and to worship together, to pray together, to hold each other up, to be in your presence. Today we lift up all the people who are in need of special care, who are in need of your comfort in your presence, who might be seeking some sort of anything <laughs> um just something to hope on hope for and something to hold on to today we especially pray for marcine hubner richard ficken jill and tim kramer and their family gloria nortel herb grebe sue becky Selma James, 
Julia, Suhash, Margaret Falconer, Shelley McLaughlin, Laura Jarrett, Terry, Ben Lehman, Howard Fales, Rebecca Neal, Catherine, Jeff, Felicia Culp, Jack Overton, Glenn Hardesty, Janelle Hargist, Tom Waters, Kim Brady, Gail, Kelly McCarthy, the family and friends of Tommy Mathias on his death, Marie Brody, and Steve Wana, and anyone else who we may name here aloud or silently in our hearts now. Lord be with us all as we continue on this beautiful Wednesday. Pray for your peace. We pray for you to, for us, your presence to be known. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And uh, my cat says hello. This time she stayed around. <laughs> Peace be with you. Have a wonderful day.